Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this weekend uh, stock market update for the week ending Friday, October 10th, we're going to focus primarily on the on the NASDAQ 100, the Qs. But let's just show what happened with the SPY this on Friday. Down 18.14 on Friday. Huge move to the downside. It was about equal to in one day. Actually, it was greater than the two day move that happened on July 31st to August 1st. And on a weekly basis, down 16, 19, closing below the trading of the prior three weeks. So pretty negative picture, similar kind of picture with the Qs in terms of the move down in here. But it didn't close below the prior three weeks. Matter of fact, it didn't even close below the prior two weeks, I don't think. Let me look at that low. 588.50, no, it didn't. But it's still a pretty big downdraft. All right, so the only wave picture that I'm counting is this, and I've got an alternate. Right now, my primary count says it looks like wave one may be done in here, okay, and that we are starting, and I'm talking about minor one of intermediate five. So that means that we've begun uh, minor two, which, again, here's the targets when, you, when it comes to uh, wave two pullback. Okay, and usually the default is that I look for a zigzag type of move. We'll see what happens. So this is the way I'm counting it. And here's how that looks. The alternate count I've gotten, look at the divergence that showed up here on the RSI. The alternate count that I've got is that this may just be wave three, but the, the you know, I'll show you a couple of the indicators that I'm looking at, which several indicators actually, that make me think that this move down is pretty hard, pretty severe. That it gives me doubt that it's a, a minor, you know, that it's this fourth wave. So the, let me just elaborate on the alternate for a minute. If it's the alternate, Manu wave three, that means it's Manu wave three, like that, okay? Which would mean we'd pull back less severely, not quite as much as, as that. So we'll see what happens in here. Uh, as we start to pull down and just take a look at the wave structure in terms of what we get. Now, we're deeply oversold. We're not as oversold as, you know, back over here on April 8th. I'll show you that in a second on the McClellan Oscillator. So, and let me just go there right there, right now. Here's the picture. So here's the McClellan Oscillator, and we are sitting at minus 196. Over here on August 1st, minus 177. This is the second lowest reading on the McClellan Oscillator this year. The only other readings that we've got, reading that we have, that's lower is on April 8th, minus 253 when you round it. So we've got room where it can get more severe short term wise, but it also looked back to December of last year, minus 300. So we're deeply oversold. The breadth of the market on Friday, very negative. Only 14% of the total was advancing. 13% of the volume was advancing. That's it. Okay, so that's the picture there on the McClellan Oscillator. Let's take a look at the VIX. And of course, you know, a lot of folks watch the VIX. Let me just do this. Okay, look at the move that happened on the VIX. 523, up 523, closing at 2166. I had just talked with my members on, it was either Wednesday or Thursday, about, I think it was Wednesday, about the divergence that's showing up in here where, you know, the market kept pushing higher, but the VIX never went to lower lows. Okay, well, that, you know, it's happened several times before. It happened back before the whole, a sell off in February, March into April. I was about to cough there. I had to get a drink of water. And it happened back over here prior to that. Just So these are just the last couple of examples. Back over in um, May, June, July of 24, it never went lower and the market had kept going higher. And, and then what did we do? We, we got that big, you know, implosion to the downside in July into, into August 5th. Okay, so negative picture. This is the highest close on the VIX since right here, May 23. Okay, so we'll see if we get any follow through or, you know, choppiness develops and then we continue to push higher. But that's the picture on the VIX right now. 
Let's take a look at a couple of these indicators that I look at. So here's the percent of stocks in the S&P 500 above their 50 day moving average. Look at this plunge, multi day plunge all five days this week. Well, maybe Wednesday was a slightly up day, but it mean definitely a pretty strong downtrend the entire week. And then this last day on Friday. Yeah, pretty, pretty hard down 36.8 percent of the stocks are above their 50 day moving average. That's it. That's the lowest reading since April 28th. OK, in the S&P. Here's on the New York Stock Exchange. 36.6 percent lowest reading since May 1st. And then on the Nasdaq composite, not quite as negative, at least not yet. It's sitting literally at the 50 50 level, right at 50 percent. So half the stocks in the Nasdaq are above and half the stocks are below their 50 day moving average. OK, what's next? Oh, I just wanted to show you this. You know, look at the semis got hit down. You know, the semis are still SMH is still the star performer on the year without a doubt. There's no other ETF sector that's even close, I don't believe. Uh, it's not a big reversal candle. But it definitely looks like negative, right? I mean, it's what we call dark cloud cover, right? Because it, it, literally where it closed way below the open and well below the midpoint of the prior body in here of the, of the candle. So pretty negative looking picture. And you got the similar kind of thing over here with the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, the SOX. So We'll see. This may be an indication that, you know, we're going to get, uh, you know, pretty good little corrective move that's uh, coming this way with the technology stocks. We'll see. All right. I want to take a look at let me go back here. I want to take a look at Bitcoin. So let me pull this up. GBTC. Now, I know you Bitcoin purists are going to say, well, you're not charting the, you know, the actual, you know, Bitcoin. Well, I tell you what, this is pretty doggone close. And it mirrors exactly what's going on with Bitcoin. Okay, And, you know, for you folks loving IBIT, uh, you know, the iShares Bitcoin Trust, same exact picture. The volume is so much better. I know. I understand that. 53.5 million is the 10 day or the 20 day average volume on IBIT versus GBTC, which is um, three and a half million average daily uh, volume. But this has so much longer history that that's why I like to stay with it and look at it. OK, so this is one of tracking the 17 months after the halving and, you know, on a monthly basis. And so, you know, yeah, we wasn't exact, but we're plus or minus. And you look at that, that we could we could candle. It's pretty negative looking. So we'll see what happens in here. The. Uh, you're not going to like the wave count I've got, I'm sure. But I'm sticking with this because right now, if the market goes into a swoon for, let's say, I don't know, a month and a half, two months, I, I'm expecting that Bitcoin is going to be into risk off mode with the market. We'll see. Now, again, you know, I'm counting this as a big expanded flat potentially could turn into a running flat. I mean, this may doesn't doesn't have to necessarily go below where wave a ended in here. Uh, so we'll see what happens, you know, and here's the pullback, the Fibonacci, um, you know, ratios uh, for a pullback wave two. And I'm talking about cycle wave two or cycle wave one. And yeah, I've got this in super cycle wave three. So when this is when this is over, I'm fully expecting a huge move to the upside when this low corrective action is over. Now, let's go back. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum was even more negative. This is a weekly view. Now, I don't have the LA wave picture on this. I haven't spent time on that yet. But look how negative this is. An outside down candle on a weekly basis and the in, you know, closing way below the low of the prior week. Right. And when you look at the daily, one of the things I like to look at is on a three day view where I take the high, low, close, etc. for three days worth of um, price action. Now, this candle isn't complete because it's only got two days in it. 
it started on with Thursday's price action. But it's starting to look like it's getting ready to roll over, just like it's done a couple other times in here. And we'll see what happens. But right now, I mean, all you got to do is look at the weekly candle and say, yeah, it looks pretty negative here for Ethereum. So wouldn't be surprised to see both of them be rolling back. OK, now a little update on Tesla. Let's see where we are, because I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, I believe. And then people were like, oh, no, they, you know, it's never going to go down to 100 now. You know, I never in the video once said, oh, Tesla's going to 100. You know, but see what happens is, let me take this back to a daily. And let's just look at down 2205 for the day, down 1634 for the week, close below the trading of the prior two weeks. The um, yeah, and right here, the only wave count I've got is this. I think that we have a completed wave two, an ABC pullback. And because of what this B wave is, which is a, a triangle, okay, triangles only occur in, you know, B waves or fourth waves. It gave me confidence to say, yeah, this is part of a zigzag corrective move that's going on. All right. And so now I feel like that wave C is complete and that we're getting ready to, that we've started to head south in here. Now, I know that, you know, they looked, people looked at this and said, well, you know, you've got this way down here, blah, blah, blah. Well, the, these are just links. I am not projecting. I'm not saying three is going to be here or whatever. I need to see wave three get underway and then we could start to make some projections once we see what's happening with the wave count. All right. So this is what I'm looking at. This is why I said, OK, this is a sideways B. This looks like ABC, you know, and if you take let me take it off semi log to get the ratios just right. C versus A almost exactly 100 percent right here. Let's see C versus A. Look at that 468. What was the high? 470.75. Pretty doggone close. So we'll see what kind of continuation we get out of this and what kind of corrective move we get. Um, and, you know, again, I'm expecting this to come down and, uh, you know, start selling off and, and getting some decent waves in here. And if this truly is a third wave, uh, this doesn't look like a zigzag to me. I mean, this looks impulsive, it looks like a five wave move down. Um, so, I mean, a C wave, like when I'm talking about this bigger wave here, C wave can be either an impulse wave or it can be an ending diagonal pattern. This looks like it's developing into an impulse wave, but we'll see if wave three confirms that it should. So we'll see what happens. That's my picture with uh, with Tesla. Now, where would I say, it, you know, th that it's flipping wrong, that it's going in the wrong direction? Well, probably if we take out this high, if we go above 470, 75, you got to sit back and say, well, OK, it's not playing out as expected. Right. And then you got to evaluate and say, well, what's what's the what's the uh, stock trying to tell us right now? It's trying to tell us it wants to go south. So. That's the picture that we've got here with Tesla. That's the picture for the market on this weekend. Everyone have a great week. We'll see how she goes on Monday. Seems like we've seen this movie before.